I, 29 male, recently divorced my ex-wife, 27 female, due to infidelity. My wife and I first met at a mutual friend's housewarming party, and we liked each other instantly. She was sweet and intelligent, and the more we got to know ourselves better, my feelings for her increased. Like every other love story, we went on multiple dates, dated, and married after two years of dating. If a psychic had told me that my wife would cheat on me in the future, I wouldn't have believed him slash her. My wife and I were the kind of couple you would see wearing matching outfits and holding hands wherever we went. We were always all over each other, and she adored the ground I walked on. Our marriage was fun and happy, and we explored so much together. My wife was my first true love. I had been in relationships in high school and college, but they weren't serious. I was the shy teenage boy and adult who sucked at sustaining relationships, but it was so easy with my wife. We clicked easily, and everything was smooth between us. My wife worked as a hairdresser in a ladies' beauty shop while I worked for a construction company. We both looked forward to a simple and happy life and were content with what we earned. For the two years my wife and I were married, I never suspected my wife was cheating. In fact, it felt like a dream when I found out that she was cheating on me. My wife loved hanging out with her friends at least once a week. They would often go out on Friday evenings as a group, fix a picnic on Saturdays, or even hang out at a bar. I wasn't so social like my wife, and I didn't have a lot of friends, but I had one of my colleagues from work who I was very close to, and he was almost like my best friend. Before I found out that my wife was cheating on me, a couple of signs led to my suspicion. For example, my wife, who used to be talkative and would share the latest gist with me whenever she returned home, suddenly became reserved. She only talked when I asked her a question, and our conversations felt forced. She always made me feel like she was doing me a favor whenever we spoke, and I hated that. In the bedroom, she started complaining that I loved getting intimate too much and that life did not revolve around getting intimate all the time. If she wasn't complaining about that, she would tell me she wasn't in mood. She always gave one excuse after the other. When this started, I thought she acted that way because she was very stressed from work and indirectly vented her frustration on me. I didn't take action immediately because I believed she would come around. There was even a time I thought I was the problem and I began to reevaluate myself. I watched how I talked to her, my tone, and even how I acted around her. I was a very bossy person in nature, but I always consciously tried to talk to her as a wife, and I watched my tone all the time. I even went as far as taking her out to fancy dinners because there was also a time she complained that I was getting boring, and I stopped doing the things we used to do while we were dating. I tried my best to rekindle our love and get back to the happy couple we once were, but nothing I did worked. She didn't appreciate anything I did, so I just stopped. When I stopped, I started paying more attention to her body language. For example, if I tried to hug her from behind like I used to, she would push me with her elbow and look disgusted. That happened at least three different times before I concluded something was wrong. Meanwhile, I noticed that she would dress well each time she said she wanted to go out with her friends. It's not like she wasn't dressing well before. She seemed more excited and took more time to do her makeup and hair. The truth was, I suspected she was seeing someone, mainly because of her changes, and I planned to confront her once I had proof. I wasn't the kind of man who would wait 10 days or for eternity to plan a stupid revenge before I confronted her. I had serious anger issues, and I'd teach her a lesson before we got to the revenge part. One day, I was at home on a weekend, thinking of ways to find out if my wife was having an affair behind my back. Our relationship had gotten worse, and we were almost like a male and female roommate living together, and we only spoke to each other for important reasons. I watched my wife dress up, do her hair, and do her makeup. Before she left, she said she was going out with the girls, and she left. For some reason, my instincts told me she was lying. I can't explain why, but I strongly believed she was lying. So after she left, I called one of her girlfriends and pretended like I wanted to speak with my wife. I claimed I kept calling her number, but she wasn't taking my calls. When I explained everything to her, her friend was confused because she was across the country and didn't have plans to meet with my wife that weekend. Her friend also said that before they all hung out together, they would announce it on their private WhatsApp group chat, but there was no announcement, 
and she was sure my wife wasn't hanging with the other girls. Immediately I heard this, I knew she had either gone to be with her lover, or she had to be somewhere else. I wasn't even bothered about finding her because I knew I could track her by GPS. Without wasting time, I left the house and followed her GPS, and it led me to a football stadium. To confirm this, I saw my wife's car parked outside and knew she was there. There weren't many people in the stadium, making it easier to spot her. When I saw her, I was shocked to see her with her little sister's high school football coach, and she was in his arms, laughing and kissing him regularly. The sight alone made me so furious. I wanted her to know I had seen her, so I walked to her and her AP, took out my phone, and started making the video as I walked to them. I was even talking in the video as if I was addressing her parents and showing them how much of a horrible daughter they raised. When my wife heard my voice, she turned in my direction, and her face became pale when she saw me. She was so stupid to call my name and ask me what I was doing there, and I went straight and attacked the football coach. At that moment, I wasn't thinking straight. I was so angry and beat the hell out of him, but thankfully some people saw us and separated us. My wife didn't know if she should beg or stop me. She just stood there in shock and couldn't even say a word. I was hurt but tried not to show my emotions until I got home. When I got home, I cried a bit and spent a lot of time throwing out her stuff on our lawn. I also sent the video I recorded to her parents, and they were so disappointed and angry at her. Her sister was the most disappointed because she could not believe my wife would have an affair with her football coach. My wife did not come home that day. She came home the next day and kept banging on my door so I could let her in for us to talk. I told her I'd call the police if she didn't get off my property, and when she didn't leave, I called the police on her. She even resisted them and acted aggressively, so they took her away. Some days later, I received messages from Facebook, and it was my wife texting me with a new Facebook account. I had blocked her old Facebook account, and she begged me to take her back and allow her to explain everything. She claimed I was always so tired when I returned from work, and I didn't give her attention in time like I used to, and that pushed her to get the attention somewhere else. She also said she didn't love her AP as much as she loved me and was only with him because of how he made her feel. I was slightly disappointed to hear that, but it still didn't change the fact that she betrayed me by cheating on me. When I told her we were getting divorced, she pleaded that I shouldn't make a decision I would regret, and I should give her a second chance. How bold of her. Long story short, we ended up divorcing, and her parents disinherited her. As for her affair partner, her parents reported him to the school, and the school was tired of always getting different parents complaining about the same thing, so he was fired. Though this happened long ago and I moved on, it still hurts. I have decided to channel the pain and focus on something more productive. For now, I no longer have the time for women, and I don't think I will anytime soon. OP, did your wife seriously say you shouldn't make any decision you would regret after she cheated on you? Believe me, one of the best decisions you've made was divorcing her. It's pathetic that she showed no remorse for cheating on you and even trying to justify her actions. I'm glad you moved on and have channeled all that pain in becoming more productive. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Now let's move on to the second story of the day. I want to share my story here because my ex-wife, who I thought we would spend the rest of our lives together, cheated on me. My wife and I were lovers right from college. We met each other as freshmen in college, and our love story began there. Two years after graduating from college and getting good-paying jobs, my wife and I officially tied the knot. We always looked forward to getting married, especially her. She looked forward to wearing a wedding band and a pretty gown, so we had a small wedding and started life on a fresh slate. Back in college, we both studied different courses, and as expected, we had different jobs. I worked as an electrician while my wife was in the business sphere. She was a business consultant, and we were both comfortable. We split the bills equally, and we shared responsibilities, too. I wasn't the kind of man who would leave all the chores for her, so I ensured I helped whenever I could. I did this because I knew she was always exhausted when she returned from work, so we worked on a plan to make life easier. Since we still lived in the same state where we attended college, what we did was, all of us who were close college buddies would plan a hangout or get together so we could continue with our friendship bond. It wasn't something we did all the time. 
It was something we planned every three to four months. Most times, we'd even push it to the end of the year so we could have enough time to prepare well. It was never something big. We were only catching up and trying to support one another however we could. We did this from the next year we left college, and we continued with it even after we married. There were always people who didn't make it to our hangouts, and that's because they were either in another state, always busy with work, or living in a different country. While my wife and I were still in college, there was this particular guy I didn't like. He loved to brag, and he and my wife had a history before I met her. I didn't like him because I always felt like I was competing with him to get my wife's attention whenever he was around. I know it sounds insecure, but I had to ask my wife to pick between him and our relationship, and she picked me. After she picked me, I asked her to stop talking to him and cut all sorts of communication with him, and she did just that. We were married for almost three years, and towards our third anniversary, I noticed that my wife started acting differently. She wasn't cold or anything. She just seemed less concerned with what was going on with me. Before I noticed her changes, we used to be very close, and we talked and gossiped about everything, but she just changed, and I couldn't help but notice it. Even when she started acting differently, I never thought she could have been cheating on me. I just thought it was one of her aggressive mood swings and expected she would return to her normal self with time. One day, after returning from work and relaxing a bit, I decided to log into my Facebook account on our home computer. I didn't have the Facebook app on my personal phone or computer because I was a social media addict and the only way I could remain productive was by deleting the apps and downloading them on our home computer so I could only surf social media in my spare time. In fact, this was a little productivity rule my wife and I followed. So we only used the home computer for social media like Facebook and Instagram. On that fateful day, as I was about to log into my Facebook account on the computer, I realized that my wife's account was still on. Initially, I just wanted to log out on her behalf, but my curiosity had the best of me. She had a lot of unread messages, and I decided to take a quick look at the people she had been talking to and the kind of conversations they had. To my greatest surprise, I discovered that my wife had been talking to the same college friend she had a fling with before we met. I was shocked to read the flirty conversation between my wife and this guy she knew I didn't like. As I went down their chat, I discovered that they had been seeing each other weekly, and she was even talking about going to his place later that week so they could catch up and finish off where they had left the last time. At that moment, everything felt like a joke to me. I was even laughing in disbelief as I read their conversation. I found it very difficult to believe that my wife had been cheating on me for months while I waited for her to return to her old self. After minutes of thinking of all the possible reasons my wife had to cheat on me, I realized there was no good enough reason for her to break my trust like that. I even became so angry, and I took pictures of their conversation with my phone. I wanted to pay her for the pain she caused me, so I changed her Facebook password, and since her email was logged in on the computer, it was easier for me to reset her password. After that, I posted the pictures of their conversation on her Facebook account, made a post as my wife, and announced to the world that I, my wife, was a cheap cheat, and I destroyed my marriage by cheating on my good husband. After that, I logged out of her account and went to her room to pack my property. Later, when she came home that evening, she met me while I was quiet and drinking, and she began to tell me how she received calls from some of our mutual Facebook friends about a post she had made on Facebook. She said someone must have hacked into her account and made that post to ruin her marriage. She even tried to log in, but when she couldn't get the correct password, she concluded that her account had been hacked. I didn't say anything while she talked. I kept drinking, and I watched her as she talked and complained. When I was done drinking to my satisfaction, I told her I knew she was cheating on me with the same guy she had a history with back in college, and she denied it. To show how manipulative she was, she began to cry and said I believed a stranger's post online and not her. I didn't even know when I started laughing, and she was shocked to see me react that way. I couldn't pretend everything was okay, so I told her I was the one who made the post, and I expressed my disappointment in her. After talking, I went into her room, packed my stuff, and left her. After I left, she kept calling. She said she would explain and that I was mixing things up, 
and I didn't give her the opportunity to explain. Weeks passed, and I didn't take her calls or return them. Aside from being so heartbroken, I started drinking, and it took me a very long time to quit because of her infidelity. I won't lie, my wife's betrayal wrecked my life. I don't know how people get cheated and move on like it's nothing. I tried to do that, but the harder I tried, the more emotionally messed up I was. She even claimed that she still loved me and that I shouldn't let her little mistake ruin our future together. Even though I still loved her, I knew I couldn't be with her. We divorced and I carried on with my life. I still feel fulfilled that she was so embarrassed, and all of her friends saw the kind of person she was, and they even judged her. Whenever I recall how she played me for a fool, I just wish she had the most miserable life out there. I'm so glad my friends were there to support me and talk sense to me. If not, maybe I would have taken her back and not share this story. On the other hand, her AP dumped her because he was more comfortable with their affair when she was still married. I have moved on, but I'm so afraid of women right now. The only women I can keep loving are my mom and sisters. I've learned the hard way that true love and loyalty don't exist, except it's coming from a dog or a cat. OP, people have different ways of dealing with heartbreak, and yours was alcohol. The most important thing is that you quit and have your life back. Women are unpredictable, and having a pet is usually better than ending up with a cheating spouse. It's great that you divorced her and have moved on, because it's insane to keep holding on to bitter memories of the past when you have a whole life ahead of you. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.